Let's be honest, we are all a mess. And that is the common ground that we must come together and pick each other up. Hey, welcome my friends, this is Jeff Yaldin, teen mental health motivational speaker and celebrity teen and family life coach, bringing you a video on teens and their drive to be perfect. My friends, I'm concerned about our future in this generation of youth striving for perfection. I think this desire is having a toxic impact on today's young people. I'm talking about our children. Where are they getting this myth that unless you are perfect, you are destined for mediocrity at best? I don't know. I'm concerned about it. I don't like it. It's like in order to get into the top colleges, you must present yourself as this superhuman. However, this facade forces many students to compromise their integrity in order to enhance their resumes. I find that many of our young people are caring more about looking good on paper than who they are growing up to be. I'm talking about character. My greater fear, though, is that this push towards perfection will undermine the very ingredients needed for success in today's world. I warn you, my friends, that the pressure to produce an attractive college candidate at 18 years old may make a less successful a human being in the long run. This isn't what we want when we think of who our kids are now and what we desire or want for them later in life. Remember our focus in raising our kids and preparing them for adulthood is to raise our kids to be respectful and kind human beings capable of following their dreams and ambitions to be successful as adults, whether they're 35, 40, 50 years old. I mean, what do successful adults need? What are the ingredients that we are missing today? I think young people need compassion. They need empathy, kindness, self-respect, generosity, motivation. They need tenacity and a strong work ethic. They need the social and emotional intelligence that will prepare them to have both leadership and communication skills. They need to be able to accept and react to constructive criticism without feeling as though they are being attacked. Parents, this is not bullying. They need creativity and an innovative spirit to be able to develop the solutions and strategies not yet imagined. Perhaps most critically though, they need resilience so they will be able to recover from life's setbacks and the blows. And my friends, they're going to take some blows and setbacks they will have. Yes, they will. Successful people are great at something. And their desire to explore other areas is what makes them pretty interesting. We are doing our kids harm when we suggest that in order to make it in this world, they must be good at absolutely everything. When we speak of those people, super people. We increase the hype and dial up the stress because we place too high expectations on our kids to be superhuman, which I don't think is possible. Imagine for a second how our teens who aren't perfect at everything, and that's pretty much all of them, respond to this kind of pressure. Some will put on the mask of indifference. They'll work hard to pretend that they don't care precisely because of how much they do care. They'll get off the playing field altogether. They will quit just because. Because if they can't be perfect, then why try? Yet others will push themselves towards perfectionism and therefore they will decrease their chances at real success. We as parents, we're putting a lot of undue pressure on our kids being high achievers, striving for perfection, which again doesn't exist. But it is critical to understand the difference between a high achiever and a perfectionist. High achievers run the world. They excel at something but have no idea that they must be good at everything. They revel in their accomplishments. They value constructive criticism 
because they look for opportunities of growth and self-improvement. They see failures as just temporary setbacks to be overcome with greater effort. Boom. In contrast, though, a perfectionist considers themselves unacceptable unless they meet impossibly high self-imposed standards. They worry about being discovered and therefore view constructive criticism as an attack. Their creativity and innovative spirit is stifled as they fear the B+. And they won't think outside the box because their fear of failure is so extreme. And so they aren't as resilient because they see even mild setbacks as catastrophes that the world may have ended as they live in the here and the now. That's another concern that I have. The pressure to be good at everything and our expectations for them to be better than they want for themselves pushes our kids towards perfectionism and undercuts the core ingredients needed for success that I spoke upon just a few seconds ago. What we need is for every kid in America to feel that they can make a major contribution to society. Not that they must change the world, but make a difference in their world, their community, friends, family, neighborhood, city, state, my friends, whatever they choose, big or small. What we need to focus on more than anything is their self-esteem and how they feel about themselves, whether they are perfect or they are not. When our heroes are only sports stars and performers, most teens learn that they'll never be a hero. If we help them to understand that our teachers, firefighters, police officers, first responders, our social workers, doctors, everybody, maybe that they're also heroes. Maybe they'll understand how much each of them can make a difference in the world. But when we hype this generation as filled with super people, we condemn those striving for perfection to self-doubt and fear failure. Worse, we condemn most of our youth to a self-perception of mediocrity. And my friends, it's a dangerous and slippery slope that compromises our influence and guidance that we have on our kids and the success of this entire generation. So here are a couple of tips that I think are really important. So whether you are a teacher, a coach, parents, or any trusted adult in the life of young people, I encourage you to heed this advice. My friends, very often I see young people struggle with perfectionism. And so here's some typical behaviors of perfectionistic young people. Number one, they're unwilling to put up their hand to answer questions in case they get them wrong. Reluctant to start tasks until they are 100% sure that they know what they want to do. Unwilling to start homework tasks because they feel they're not going to do it right, fear failure. Or being dissatisfied with the standard of work which others see as acceptable. Get very upset if they get their work wrong or they receive low grades, they make mistakes. Why even do it? They work very slowly in order to be excessively neat or to not make mistakes, and this has other consequences. Starting over repeatedly in order to make work perfect. Folks, it's never perfect. Perfectionism is a problem in several ways. First, it slows you down, which is frustrating for them and others, but it also means their rate of learning become slower and they miss vital learning time and so they end up missing on other assignments because they're too busy trying to be perfect on this one assignment. Secondly, perfectionistic people who refuse to guess or try activities have less opportunity to problem solve which in turn slows their learning. Uh, there's another plug there for social interaction and the benefit of engaging with other people. And thirdly, it becomes a vicious cycle, maybe needing therapy to break later in life. 
Behaving in perfectionistic ways increases the chance the student will be even more perfectionistic in the future. Working slowly makes students work even more slowly over time. And being unwilling to try new work makes students less likely to try new work in the future. Again, this is a vicious cycle. And my friends, evidence backs up these dangers. One research study found that young children who answered more questions in the classroom at the beginning of the year were more likely to improve by the end of the year than the other kids who didn't answer questions. Even if the question they answered was wrong. Ha! That's funny. But that's self-esteem. My friends, we need to teach our kids, don't be afraid of what other people might think or what they might say, do, or what they might even feel. You see, I find that other people are afraid to ask the same question you are asking, and they're probably looking for the answer themselves. Encourage your child to speak up for themselves and to value themselves. The most important thing to understand about perfectionism, my friends, it's anxiety. Perfectionist in kids and teens are worried kids and teens. It might look that they are being stubborn, lazy, irritated, and refusing to accept help. But really, at the heart of it all, they are anxious. They are squirming masses of nerves, trying desperately to avoid failing, making mistakes, and feeling bad about themselves. And so once we understand that perfectionism is anxiety, we can more effectively help our kids and our students. As with all anxiety problems, we need to start by being empathetic and caring towards our children. Then we must not allow anxiety to dictate what the child does or doesn't do. Instead, we need to focus on teaching and coaching our children to build the skills in brave and confident behavior. And so I want to give you five specific ways to do this. Number one, help your student to be calmer about getting things wrong, mistakes, and maybe even lower grades. It's okay. Do the best you can. Number two, help your children practice non-perfectionistic behavior. Again, you don't need to be perfect. I don't expect that of you. Number three, when they are high in anxiety and refusal mode because of their fear of failure, empathize with them. Teach them breathing skills to calm themselves down. <sighs> yes. Take a short break. Back to the work at hand. Small steps with rewards and praise. And then time limit. Agree on a certain amount of time. And when that time is up, homework is done. Yes. And number four, value, effort, and behavior more than the outcome. These kinds of skills, I think, are more important than the grades they get at school. You could argue with me, that's okay, but I think the skills are more important. Number five, be patient, my friends. It's going to be okay. Parents, we need to spend more time with our kids today. They're growing up much differently than we did growing up, and they're exposed to so much more that it's concerning and potentially damaging to the growth and well-being of our children. My friends, it takes a village to raise a child. It will always take a village to raise a child. Thank you for watching. I'm Jeff Yalden, jeffyalden.com. Take care.